Good morning, children. I'm Sarita Asis. Now I'm going to teach you packaging of DNA. As you know, the DNA can be seen inside the nucleus of a cell. Inside the nucleus, we can see the thread-like structure, chromatin. So how does DNA is packed inside this nucleus, we can see. So before that, we have to see the length of the DNA in a cell. So how much length the DNA has, we can see now. The formula which is used to measure the length of the DNA in a cell is total number of base pairs into distance between two consecutive base pairs. So, in a double helix structure, you know base pairs are there. How many base pairs are there? That is a total number of base pairs. Okay. And the next one is distance between two consecutive base pairs. So, both the numbers are unique number. So, how this length of the DNA in a cell can be calculated, we can see. First, we can see the total number of base pairs in a cell. Base pairs in a DNA. Okay. So, that is 6.6 into 10 raised to 9. That is the total number of base pair in a DNA. That is a unique number. And next one is what is the distance between Two consecutive base pairs. Two consecutive base pair. That is also a unique number I talked in the last class. That is 0 0.34 nanometer. Here we can convert this into meter. 0 0.34 into 10 raised to minus 9 meter. Okay. Now we can calculate this. 6.6 .6 into 10 raised to 9 into 0 0.34 into 10 raised to minus 9. So, 2.2 meter. So, this is the length of the DNA in a cell. So, 2.2 meter. So, how does lengthy polymer or how does lengthy chain of DNA is packed inside the nucleus? Let's see. Okay. Before that, I want to tell you. See, if we know the length of the DNA, we can calculate the number of base pairs. How? Which formula we can use? Let's see. See, if we know the length of the DNA, we can calculate the total number of base pairs in a DNA by the formula. So, total number of base pair can be calculated by the formula length of DNA divided by distance between two consecutive base pair. Clear? So now we can calculate the length of the DNA equally is 1.36 millimeter. Calculate the number of base pair. We can use the formula so, the number of base pair is equal to length of DNA divided by distance between two consecutive base pair. Okay. So, what is the length of the DNA here? 1.36 millimeter. And what is the distance between two consecutive base pairs? That is a unique number I told you. 0 0.34 meter. 0 0.34 into sorry, 34 into 10 raised to minus 9 meter. Okay? And we can calculate over here. Here, one point, uh, this is millimeter, we can convert this into meter. So, 1.36 into 10 raised to minus 3. You know, it is meter. Then here, minus 9. So, we will get 
4.6 into 10 raised to uh, 6 base pairs. So this is the number of base pairs. Is it clear about the calculations? Now we can see the package of DNA in prokaryotes. How the DNA is packed? This much lengthy polymer or lengthy chain of DNA, how it is packed inside the prokaryotes. Prokaryotes, you know, they are not having a well-defined nucleus, they are having only a nucleoid, a nuclear region called a nucleoid. Let's see. So this is the structure of a prokaryote. So prokaryotes, there is a nucleoid only. That means there is not well defined nucleus. So inside the nucleus it is packed. How it is packed? Before that I want to tell you. The DNA is a negatively charged polymer. It is negatively charged. Negatively charged. DNA is negatively charged. So in prokaryotes. This DNA, negatively charged DNA, is coiled with the positively charged proteins. And which type of proteins? Non histone proteins. Non histone proteins. So, here we have to see what are non histone proteins. So, proteins are of two types. Proteins. Histone proteins and non histone proteins. Here in histone proteins, it is rich in amino acids such as lysine and arginine. So the histone proteins are rich in the amino acids such as lysine and arginine, but they are absent in non histone proteins. And there are different types of histone proteins. They are H1, H2A, H2B, H3, H4. Okay. So these are the types of histone proteins. And these histone proteins consist of lysine and arginine. And in non-histone proteins, there is no amino acid such as arginine and lysine. And these histones are positively charged. So here in the prokaryotes, the negatively charged DNA is coiled with the positively charged non histone proteins. Is it clear? Next we can see packaging in eukaryotes. Eukaryotes as you know it is a well defined cell in eukaryote. So nucleus is there. Are inside the nucleus this lengthy DNA can be packed. How? So as I told you it is a negatively charged DNA. So DNA, the negatively charged DNA here wrapped by positively charged histone proteins. Here the different types of histone proteins such as H2A H2B, H3 and H4 are occurring as a unit. Unit occur as a unit called histone octama. Histone octama. So here the histone proteins occur as a unit of eight molecules to form histone Octama. And this histone octama, I will show you the histone octama. And this histone octama, so this is the eight histone octama or histone proteins, and this negatively charged DNA wrapped around. So this is the DNA wrapped around this histone octama and then it is plugged into this H1 protein. This is the H1. This is the H1 protein. H1. So all other histone proteins such as H2A, H2B, H3, H4 
uh, forming a octagonal structure and the negatively charged DNA is wrapped around this octama then it is plugged by this H1 protein. So this structure is called nucleosome. Nucleosome. So what is a nucleosome? So the negatively charged DNA is wrapped around histone octama then it is plugged by an H1 protein. And that structure is called nucleosome. So here, this nucleosomes form. Let me show you. So the packaging or continuous formation of this nucleosome form a chain of chromatin. I'll show you. You can see the nucleosomes. So continuous formation of this nucleosome. So the nucleosomes, this continuous packaging form a chain which is called a chromatin. Okay. And this chromatin packed it to form a solenoid structure. And then it is coiled to form chromatin fibers. And this nucleosomes arranged in chromatin just like beads on string. I will show you. Beads on string. So this is the beads on string structure. It looks like beads on a string. Okay. So this chromatin contains coil and contains to form chromosome at the time of cell division. Is it clear? So this is a nucleosome structure and the, these are the different types of nucleosomes. This is a single nucleosome and such several nucleosomes are there and we can see in a single nucleosome, I will show you the picture of nucleosome in your textbook. This is a picture of nucleosome in your textbook. You can see this is the histone octama. So this one is histone octama and this one is a H1 histone plugged by H1 histone and this is a DNA. DNA is wrapped around this histone octama. So 200 base pairs, 200 base pairs are present in one nucleosome. Okay, a single nucleosome consists of 200 base pairs of DNA or we can say 200 base pairs are wrapped around a histone octama to form a single nucleosome. Okay, so as I told you there are many nucleosomes. So how we can calculate the amount of nucleosomes in a typical mammalian cell that we can see. Calculate the number of nucleosomes in a typical mammalian cell. So there is a formula. So the formula is number of base pairs in the DNA divided by number of base pair in a nucleosome. So what is the number of base pairs in a DNA? That's a unique number, unique number that you know. 0.6 into 10 raised to 9. Divide by what is the number of base pair in a single nucleosome? That is 200 base pair. So the amount is 3.3 into 10 raised to 7. 3.3 into 10 raised to 7 is the total number of nucleosomes in a typical mammalian cell. So this is the formula. Is it clear? Next we can see. In a typical nucleus, we can see chromatin as thread-like structures. So, this is a chromatin as thread-like structure. In some area of this chromatin, the cells are loosely packed. The cells are loosely packed. And the, they stain only light, this part. Light staining we can see. And the next region is dark. Okay, so light stain, lightly stained parts are there and 
and this chromatin is called u chromat okay so at the same time we can say some tightly packed areas tightly packed areas so tightly packed the cells are there in that chromatin and they are darkly stained darkly stained so this is that area okay and that chromatin is called heterochromat okay when we see through the microscope we can see the chromatin inside the nucleus as tightly packed or darkly stained and lightly stained the lightly stained areas are called so these are the lightly stained areas and these are the darkly stained areas and the lightly stained areas are called euchromatin and the darkly stained areas are called heterochromatin and this euchromatin is transcriptionally more active what is transcription the formation of rna from the dna or we can say the flow of genetic materials from dna to rna that process transcriptionally this euchromatin is more active but transcriptionally this heterochromatin is inactive not at all active so let's see the difference between euchromatin and the heterochromatin very important at euchromatin we can see they are loosely packed that means they are packed loosely packed but the heterochromatin is tightly packed or closely packed that means the cells in the euchromatin are loosely packed but the cells in the heterochromatin are tightly or closely packed and the second point is they are lightly stained lightly stained here the heterochromatin are darkly stained okay and the third point is the euchromatin are transcriptionally transcriptionally more active transcriptionally more active but here heterochromatin are transcriptionally inactive that means not active okay so these are the difference between euchromatin and the heterochromatin these are the two types of chromatin inside the nucleus Hope you understood everything about the packaging of DNA in prokaryotes and eukaryotes. That's all for today. Thank you.